All right, I'm back. I wanted to do another video. It's been quite a while, and I apologize for that. I've been busy, but I'm going to do another one. Uh, so two things. I wanted to do a lesson today. It's not a tutorial, so I apologize, but that'll be coming soon about how to practice better. I know this isn't something people talk about a lot, but I really wanted to go over it because I've been teaching a long time, and I've seen literally every single student make this mistake, and I do too. And the other thing I wanted to do was, I don't really know what song to do next, because it's been quite a while, and I was looking down my list, and I thought, maybe people have changed their minds and they want to hear something else now. So how about this? In the comments, you know, write what song you want to hear, and whatever one gets the most requests, that's the one I'll do. I think that'd be cool, and um, I should be able to do it the next couple days, or maybe even a couple weeks, depending on how busy my performance schedule is. But I promise I'll do it, and I look forward to it. And um, yeah, so back to the lesson. So it sounds kind of silly, but you know, a lot of people when I hear them practice, or like I said, like every single person, including me, is we practice mistakes. Um, and what do I mean by that? I mean like when you're playing a song and you're pretty good at some parts and there's a couple parts you can't do, instead of working on the parts they can't really do well, they'll play the whole song and then when the hard parts come up, just make the same mistakes every single time. I know this sounds really obvious and you're like, oh, I don't do that. Everybody does it. We do it, we don't even know it. So I'll give an example and I'll show you what you mean, what I mean, and a great way to clear that up and you'll be much better at guitar, much faster, and uh, you'll have a lot more free time because you won't have to practice all day. <laughs> well, you still will have to practice a lot, but it'll cut back the practicing time a lot, which what we all want because we want to just have fun playing music. You know, practicing can be fun too, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so let's do a song I haven't done yet. Karen, please come back. Cool, so let's pretend that's the part that you just learned and you're working on it and you're playing and it sounds like this. There it goes. Cool. Then you try it again. Don't worry, I'm getting to something here. Sounds good. Sounds good, right? Alright, where is this E? There it is. Obviously, the problem here is going from this chord, a B minor, to an E. By the way, the song is A, C sharp minor, B minor, E. Maybe at the end I'll tell you how to do those. That last chord, the person practicing it that I was just trying to uh, pretend to be, was having a big problem going from B minor to E. They were going like this. And hold on a second, there it is. So what I say to that person is, stop practicing the beginning part, you're wasting time. You're already really good at that. That sounds good. This sounded great. Even when you went to the B minor, it sounded great. The problem was you had this big pause because you weren't good at fingering from a B to an E. It's kind of a big jump with your hands. You can see I'm doing a lot of stuff here. So what I would tell the person is stop playing the beginning part all together and just play a B minor and play an E. Do that a few times. Then do it without even strumming. Take this hand out of the equation so your brain doesn't have to do that. You just literally look at it. B minor, E. B minor. It'll take a while. You won't be as fast as this in the beginning. And then do it maybe without looking at the guitar. Basically, get the part that you're not good at so good that you can do it without really thinking, just like you were with the first part. And then start strumming. Put your, hand, put your right hand in or your left hand, depending if you're ready or lefty. Going back and forth. And then try it with the strumming right before that. Once you can do that, I guarantee you, you can do the whole section now really great. You do the first part, which you already know. Now when you get to this part, you're going to nail it because you've been practicing the whole thing. And once again, I know this sounds really obvious, but people do this all the time and they don't even know they're doing it. I do it too. And if you're unsure about it, a great way to do it is uh, record yourself. And it's so easy to do nowadays because we have a phone. So you just take out your phone, do a little voice memo or whatever, record yourself practicing the song or trying to play the whole song all the way through and listen to the parts that don't sound right. And then you could even write them down take note of them and then just drill those parts over and over and over again 
this is a great way to practice. You're going to learn a lot quicker. You're going to get the song together a lot quicker. And you're going to be a much better guitar player or whatever instrument you play. Whatever you're trying to learn, really. It's just basically focusing on your weaknesses. I mean, a good analogy is like sports. You know, if you're playing basketball all the time and you want to be a really good basketball player and you're really awesome at everything, but you're terrible at layups, you should probably spend a lot of time doing layups, right? <laughs> It's much easier to do in sports because everything seems so obvious. On guitar and music, it is much more difficult. You have to use your ears to listen to everything, think about everything like that. It's not as obvious between a layup and a jump shot. You're like, yeah, obviously I'm a lot worse at that. It sticks out a little more. Um, but that's the idea. And, you know, work on that with, take a song that you already know or you kind of know, you're pretty good at, and record yourself and listen to yourself and find uh, what things you're not good at and work on those. I guarantee you can be much better at guitar. If you do this all the time for the rest of your life with anything, you're going to be better at everything. So it's a cool lesson learned even if you don't want to be a professional guitar player or something. Anyway, how the song goes, it's an A bar chord. First finger bars across everything on the fifth fret. Third, uh, third finger, seventh fret of the A string. Pinky, seventh fret of the D string. That's the A string, the fifth string, D string, it's the fourth string. 2nd finger, 6th fret of the 3rd string, the G string. Everything else is pressed with the bar chord in the 1st finger. Bar chords are a little hard if you're not an intermediate player, that might be tricky. And maybe I could do a bar chord tutorial next if a lot of people request that. Feel free to say anything in the comments, what you want to do. So it goes from that to a C-sharp minor. Fortunately, A to C-sharp minor is really easy. If you can already do an A, you literally just move everything back 1 fret, and then you take these fingers, not the first finger, but the second, third, and fourth fingers, and you move them one string that way, everything together. So now we have our first finger on the first, fourth fret, pressing the sixth and fifth string. Then the third finger is on the sixth fret, pressing the fourth string. The pinky is on the sixth fret, pressing the third string. The second finger is on the fifth fret, playing the second string, and then your first finger is also barring everything, so it's also hitting that high E, the first string, on the fourth fret. Oops. I went back to the A. So this is A. Remember, go back, move everything down. Or you can think about it the other way. You can move everything down and go back. I do them at the same time until you get it moving fast. I go back. While I'm going back, I lift up. Lift this up and go over there. And then it's B minor is the same thing, but you go back two frets. And then E. This is a really easy E chord. So it's zero on the sixth string, second finger, second fret on the fifth string, third finger, second fret on the fourth string, first finger, first fret on the third string, and then open B and E. I'm not going to do the whole song because the, the whole point is I'm just trying to teach a teaching tutorial. And uh, I just wanted to show you that real quick, and I felt like it would be right if I didn't show you something of what I was playing. But anyway, um, can't wait to see the comments and uh, to do another song for everybody, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'll see you soon.